thing is, you get these guys that have been played with their whole lives, and they, they, they can't deal with reality. There's our suspect now. Put the gun down and don't jump into any books! I got him! He's down here! Uh, where'd he go? With the thing he jumped the fence? Oh, where'd he... He's in the trunk. Why did you do nothing, you stupid f***ing You know what you're dealing with! You're shaking my boots! You're shaking my boots! You're dead! You're all dead! Alright, I'm gonna take this loser to the pokey. Why me? Why me? Ow! 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 Worked this ship long enough to see some pretty animated things. Boom! Let him up. Evening! You been drinking tonight, sir? No. Just a couple of nogs as the poles are, Oscar. Oscar. Alright, step out of the sleigh, please. Um. Uh, what's in the trunk? Nothing. So if I open that trunk. I'm not gonna find anything I don't like, am I? Um, you know, this is my wife's sleigh. All right, pop the trunk. Ho! Oh! Hello, what's yeah, this? It's just what's snow this? from the North Pole. I, I'm holding it for the Easter Bunny. Santa, you're under arrest. Oh, come on. You have the right to remain silent. You better not pout. Boy, you oh, better oh, not... Oh, oh, there he goes, get him! Oh, oh, here, here, you bastards! You rat bastards! You, you're not getting anything in your stocking! I know you! I know where you live! I will take you out! And I don't mean on a date, you f***ing You bastards! That's the hardest part of this job, busting you heroes. I'm probably gonna get a big lump of coal in my stocking this year, but I'm just doing my job, you know? Perfect, thank you. If you really want enlightenment, then just lighten up. Alrighty, folks. Now, before I get on my little soapbox here, I want to issue a little bit of a disclaimer. The title of this video is Let's Not Blame the Police. Make no mistake about this, this does not mean I'm siding with the police. Oh no. My goal here is to be objective about the dichotomy that I'm about to outline. So this means, if you are pro-cop, you're probably going to hate this and you're probably going to hate me. If you are anti-cop, you're probably gonna hate this, and you're probably gonna hate me. So, it's your own choice if you keep listening. You have been warned, I have been fair, okay? So, this is your chance, red pill or blue pill. If you wanna take the blue pill route, hit the stop button, these aren't the droids we're looking for, move along. If you wanna take the red pill, keep listening, cause here it goes. More and more, I've been seeing cops get up on the internet soapbox, as it were, <clears throat> speaking out against the globalist tyranny, the Illuminati tyranny, and Obama, and 
this and that, and da da da, and talking about um, amendment rights and you know people's rights and we need to come together and for lots for lots for lot. Well, you know what? That's all well and great to see. I mean, it's good to see that you know cops are starting to wake up right along with the rest of us. Um, I'm glad to see that there are even some comps that have been awake for a very long time, and, and perhaps even longer than most of us, and that is very good to see. However, <laughs> there's one thing I've been seeing in this that I'm not particularly a fan of. I see a lot of these cops getting up there like, yeah, I'm a cop, I got a badge, I got a gun, I'm a cop, I'm a cop, I'm a cop. Worship me. I'm a cop. Join me. Join my group think bandwagon. Let's go get the bad guys. Let's go form a posse. Cause I'm the fucking man. I'm the fucking man with fucking balls. You need to fucking get behind me. Cause I'm a cop. Yeah, yeah. I've been on the force for 15 years, 27 years. I'm a cop, motherfucker, so you're either with me or against me. Okay, George W. Bush. <laughs> I think he said the same thing. When George W. Bush said it, I'm, I'm thinking, all right, he's saying you're either with him or with the terrorists, so we have no other choice but to be with the terrorists, because if you're with him, you're with the terrorists, and if you're against him, you're with the terrorists, so you're with the terrorists no matter what. As the old saying goes, there isn't a terrorist behind every bush, but there may very well be a bush behind every terrorist, or, you know, someone in that group of globalist scumfucks. But anyway, moving right along, let's not sidetrack. I want to share some information with you people, both police officers and non-police officers alike, that if you're not too angry with me and don't want to beat my face in for it right away, you know, or maybe you do and then you give yourself a little time to take a few deep breaths, count to 15 and, you know, kind of, kind of calm down a little bit to process the information, that maybe this will be helpful for you, maybe this will be beneficial for you. It is my hope at any rate. We'll see what happens. I respect to... Uh, I respect your right to think what you think and believe however you want to believe and feel however you want to feel, so, it, you know, it's all good by me, whatever you decide to make of this, I, you know, completely respect your right to make of it, whatever it is you want to make of it, so I digress, yes, I ramble, I rant, it's what I do, get over it, anyway, so, here's the deal, there's a lot of police corruption, like, more than ever in, like, the history of anything. And now, just so you know, I live in Chicago. We're like third in the nation for police corruption. Right behind LA, which is right behind New York City, okay, so... Besides the endless list, the endless entries of YouTube videos that you can see where cops are beating up on and murdering civilian men, women, and children, and pulling them over for traffic violations and then tasering them half to death and sometimes even killing them or a cop just doesn't like what someone says and tasers the shit out of them or there's a peaceful Occupy protest and cops violate the rights of the protesters and sneak up behind them and grab them up and toss them in paddy wagons, hold them without charge Oh man, this must be like a, a lawyer's wet dream with all the lawsuits being waged on that, let me tell you but needless to say Especially in big cities like Chicago. Now, I can't speak for little towns or little suburbs or whatever. But especially in big cities like Chicago, police corruption is absolutely rampant. As a matter of fact, I mean, like, even in my personal experiences, I don't, I don't know too many people who can say otherwise in their experiences, at least not in Chicago. In my experiences, I've been fucked with by the cops so many times. I've lost count, okay? And... Just so you know, I have a spotless record. Not even so much as a as a ticket ever. Click it or ticket. Not even that. Nothing. I've never been arrested, never been in trouble for nothing. I've been a good boy, okay? Not bragging or anything. I'm just using that as a contrast to the fact that, yeah, I've been fucked with so many times by cops just because they can. Although there is one thing that I do like about the cops that tend to fuck with me. They admit that they don't know the law. I've been told many times, well, I'm not a lawyer, I'm a cop. Oh, if you want to know about the law, you're going to have to talk to a lawyer. Um, they admit that they're adrenaline junkies. They, they admit that they are the law, that they're above the law. Um, I've had cops say things like, 
I don't need to obey uh, uh, an order by a judge. I don't care what a judge says. Oh, and I mean, don't get me wrong, the judicial systems are completely fucking screwed, too. Totally corrupt. I mean, a judge is, is a dictator and, and, and king, and the law doesn't matter. If he wants to throw you in jail for no reason, by God, he's going to. This is the Fourth Reich, make no mistake. We live in Hitler's wet fucking dream. Hitler could not have done it this good. So, you know, I'm, I'm just, let me be clear, I'm not sticking up for the judicial system either. There was a time where, one time, somebody or another thought something was going down or something, and everything was peaceful, though. And the cops were called out. The cops were actually angry. They were pissed. I mean, they were telling us that they don't like the fact that it was peaceful, that they, they, they were hoping for a fight. One of them said, and I quote, I live for this shit. This is why I do this. And they had the audacity to tell us that basically if some idiot happens to call the cops out again and, you know, there's no fight going on, then everyone's going to jail. So, you know, apparently being peaceful is a crime. If the cops are called out and you're not committing a crime, then that's a crime and you're going to jail. If you're peaceful, that's a crime and you're going to jail. So you can see how absolutely ridiculous this has gotten. Not to mention these days, Steve, entrance tests for the police academy that determine, you know, whether or not someone's going to end up being a police officer or not. They are totally geared towards pulling in these adrenaline junkie psychopaths who, you know, if not for the police academy, may very well have ended up as, you know, gangbangers or what have you. But at least they did well enough in school and stayed out of enough trouble to be able to qualify for the police academy to pass that and, you know, end up as a police officer. And, you know, this is a very big problem. So needless to say, if a cop is going to get up on their soapbox about, oh, New World Order this, Illuminati that, and corruption this, and our politicians are corrupt, and the people need to rise up and do something about it, and da 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 if you're one of those cops doing that, you better be willing to admit one of two things, okay? That number one, either you're a corrupt motherfucker and you're sick of the corruption, you've decided you're going to turn over a new leaf and be on the side of the people. Or, you have to admit that you're a good cop that has never been in alignment with the corruption, but that there is police corruption. You need to stop covering for each other, covering for the boys in blue. You know, just because a boy in blue is a criminal and commits a crime, and you might be a boy in blue who isn't a criminal and isn't committing a crime, that doesn't mean you have to cover for them. Just because they're a fellow police officer, okay? So that's point one. The, the people are not going to trust you. At all. No matter how much you say, you're either with me or against me, then you're going to take my side because I got balls and I got a badge and I got a gun. I don't care what the fuck you got. You're all fucking lip service, bitch, okay? All lip service. Unless you can put your actions, primarily your compassion and your empathy, where your mouth is. <laughs> Otherwise, there's no difference between you and all these other cops here in, you know, various cities that run their mouth going, I got a badge, I got a gun, look at me, I rule the world, I'm so big and fucking bad. No difference. It's just, it's the same bandwagon with, a. Uh, a different paint job, you might say. <laughs> so if you can be humble, if you can have integrity, if you can have compassion, if you can have empathy, a bit of intelligence, common sense, a bit of relation with the people, then my mind is open. Otherwise, it's all just fucking lip service. Nobody's going to listen to you. Very few people are going to take you seriously at all, which is a damn shame. Especially if you are a natural-born frickin' leader who can rally people together, who can really do some good. You're fucked if you have no empathy. You're not gonna be able to do shit. Anything that's about unity is a part of the solution. Anything that's division is a part of the problem, okay? Now, I do understand. Don't get me wrong, I do understand that even the most arrogant of cops do have a lot of valid points. Let's put ourselves in their perspective for a moment, for those listening who are not cops, okay? <clears throat> People in general, just as a standard rule, are ignorant and stupid and immature. They have the mental capacity of three. Don't let the grown-ass bodies fool you, okay? 
the older they are just means they've, they've got they've had more time to practice being better fucking three-year-olds tantruming irrationally so these cops have to deal with this and that can be kind of stressful you know i mean can you imagine day after day after day dealing with goddamn idiots and not knowing whether or not any of those idiots is just gonna pull a gun and try to blow your fucking head off you gotta see it from the cops point of view as well i mean they're out there doing the best they can do and they're dealing with all these idiots and you know they're human too shit like that's gonna get to you after a while you're gonna get a little cocky you're gonna get a little arrogant Maybe you might snap and go psycho and start offing some fucking children like a lot of cops do. Or tasering pregnant mothers and things like that that many, many, many cops do when they fucking snap. And you know, on top of that, you know those ticket quotas that they're not allowed to admit they have that you cops all know you have it. You're not allowed to say it, but you all know. Imagine the stress of that. So not only do you have to deal with all these freaking idiots, idiots who may or may not kill you, depending on where you're at, your situation, and how much drugs the person you're dealing with is on or not, or how mentally stable they are or not, or what have you. On top of that, now you gotta play salesman for the police state. Which means you have to entrap people who might not even be doing anything wrong. You know why? Because you've got a ticket quota to make. And if you don't make it, you're fired. And that's the reality of it, people. That's what these cops have to deal with. They have to make their ticket quota, or they're fired. That means no paycheck, no pension. They, them and their family might end up homeless. So they gotta do what they gotta do for their own survival. So, you know, you gotta kinda see it from the cop's perspective as well, okay? And if we want any of these cops to consider working with the people instead of against them, we have to show them that we can empathize with them too. That we can kind of see their point of view, their perspective. Because we can't just sit here and say, hey bitch, you gotta have some empathy and compassion and see it from my perspective, if we're not willing to see it from there. You know, it don't work that fucking way. You know, if you're gonna be a hater, hating cops just to hate, then you're just as much of a part of the problem as, as the corrupt cops that are, you know, killing kids and beating up on women and all this other shit and, you know, gunning down fucking elderly and all this other abusive shit, tasering teenagers at Occupy protests just because you can and macing little girls in the face and all this other shit that you see. Anybody who's just hating cops just to hate is every bit as bad as the cops that they hate. Sorry, you're a part of the problem, not the solution. The solution is unity. The solution is coming together. The solution is having the balls to be open-minded. Maybe relate to each other a little bit instead of getting on our high horses. Like, oh yeah, I'm a cop. I, I know it all, so shut the fuck up. Or, oh yeah, I'm a cop hater. Cops are dirty motherfuckers, so you, you know. It's still a dichotomy. It's it's an energetic vampirism. It's just one side feeding off the other. and You know, that's all just a part of the problem. So I'm not here to do that. I'm not here to be pro-cop, anti-cop, or pro or anti any fucking thing. The only thing I'm here to do is outline the physics of the problem, hoping that maybe you guys can be a little more solutions oriented. Maybe I'm giving you something to think about. Because police right now have a worse approval rating than the worst politicians in history. Police approval rating right now is fucking zero. I mean, personally, unless there's like someone bleeding on the frickin' floor or something uber serious that I know I can't handle on my own, then I will not call 911. I mean, if I if I even halfway remotely think I can handle something on my own, I will. I will not call 911. Because every time you call 911, thinking you're a good person, trying to do the good right thing, the boys in blue come and they fuck with you. They treat you like the enemy. Because they see everybody as the enemy. It goes back to what I said before, look at all the shit they deal with. They don't have any accurate friend or foe sensor mechanisms. The people are the enemy. They no longer serve and protect the people. They serve and protect themselves. Whenever I look at a police car, I look at it and think to myself, you know, they spell policy wrong. It ends with a Y, not an E. 
Whenever I hear the word cop, I think to myself, Gestapo. That's synonym. Cop, Gestapo. That's, you know, this is a police state. That's what America's turned into. Hitler did not do better and could not have done better. America has topped him. This is Hitler's wet dream. If he was alive today, he'd be coming himself. He would be overjoyed. This, this has become his wet dream. So my question to both police and non-police alike, are what are you willing to do about it? You know what Hitler said? He said the beautiful thing, the beautiful thing about the totalitarian state is that it forces those who fear it to emulate it. That is absolutely true whether you're a cop or not. That's why I always like to say, don't rise up against the new world order, the globalists. Don't rise up against the police. Don't fear or panic or worry. Don't do any of that shit. That's what the police state wants you to do. That's still a divide and conquer mechanism. All the people need to do is unite and stand in solidarity and say no. Because all these fat cat politicians up at the top, without all of us, they have no power of enforcement. If everybody stands up and says no, they're just a bunch of rich toddlers crying a fucking tantrum. That's all they are at that point. We gotta stand together instead of fighting each other. We have been duped, my friends. You know, even the truth movements bicker and bitch with each other, fight each other, and don't do much good. You know why? Because every little truth group ends up finding a piece of the puzzle, right? But then each group arrogantly thinks that it's found the whole puzzle. No, it hasn't. It's only found a piece. So all these pieces, they don't come together. You can only do good if they if you if you come together, you bring all the information together to see the bigger picture, to think outside of the box, think outside of the mind prison that you have been brainwashed and enslaved to trap yourselves in and to police everyone around you into remaining trapped in through fear and intimidation and adversity. We gotta come together, people. I mean, all this bickering and bitching, blah, blah, blah. It's what they want. It's what the globalists want. Can you people not see that? Two plus two still equals four, and no matter who's doing what, it's pretty simple. Two plus two will always equal four, regardless of who's doing what, okay? So if addition will always be addition, and subtraction will always be a subtraction, then guess what? Multiplication, division, are no exception to that. No matter how you divide the people, it's still division. And united we stand, divided we fall. If you are in any way, shape, or form about division, you are a part of the problem, not the solution. So I want you guys to think about that for a while. You know, once you calm down from your anger, getting all, like, steamed and pissed off at me. Once, once your mind clears, once the smoke exits your ears, I want you to think about that. And on that note, I'll end on a quote from Mother Teresa when she was invited to the anti-war rally one time. She said, I will never attend an anti-war rally, but if you ever have a pro-peace rally, invite me. Wise woman, wise word. She knows that division is division, no matter how pretty you dress it up. Okay? She knows that unity is unity, no matter what you do. Addition is addition, subtraction is subtraction, division is division, multiplication is multiplication. No matter who's doing what to who, no matter who shot who with a taser, no matter who beat the hell out of who, no matter what Bush does, Obama does, Putin does, what the Bilderbergers are doing, no matter what, Division is still division, and unity is still unity. So whatever you're doing, thinking you're rallying people to some glorified fucking rebel without a clue fucking cause, you might want to ask yourself, is what you're doing group think division, or is it unity? Because unity respects the right of the sovereign individual to think and feel and express authentically as they are. And that means if they hate you, they can hate you. They can say they hate you. And if you're really about unity, if you're really about freedom, then that'll be all good with you. That'll be all well and fine with you. As a matter of fact, you won't be mad at all. You will thank them and you will be appreciative to them for telling you the truth. Instead of pretending to be your friend in your face and stabbing you in the back later. 
when you're not looking. You will appreciate those people who say, hey, I hate you. I dislike you. I think you're full of shit, and I think you suck. And you will respect their right to their thoughts, their feelings, their expressions, their freedom. Because if you can do that, then you already know what freedom is, and I salute you. And if you can't do that, then you don't got a fucking clue what freedom is. That's all.